Good evening. <laughs> I'm Chris. And I am Shri. And we are Technomadia. And um, yeah, we've been full timers living on the road for almost 11 years now. So we like to come online and uh, share some of our experiences like this. It's a fun thing for us to do. So this is part of our live video chat series. Um, if you're watching the archive of this, either it's not, what is today's date anyway? February 22nd? 22nd. 22nd, I, 22nd February 22nd. If it's okay. not February 22nd and you're watching this on YouTube, then you're watching the archive and you won't be able to ask questions live with us, but we do welcome them in the comments. So if you do have questions, go ahead and ask those there. But if it is February 22nd, you are here live. And uh, we'll take questions after we do our presentation on the topic. Uh, tonight's topic, we'll be talking about awesome campgrounds and how we find them and campsites oh that's right yes. campsites yeah. not the campgrounds. Not just the campgrounds there's the but how to find the primo sites at a campground we do have a video on finding the campground so you can go i'll link to that one and uh, you can find those how to find the campground so this is you've already found the campground what campsite do you want to pick that best meets your needs yes because that makes all the difference sometimes it really can i mean you can be at a campground and you can have a site that isn't your ideal and you have a crappy experience at the campground. But you have the site that is perfect for you. And you can make a, a crappy campground heaven. Or almost heaven. That's, That's pretty close. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. So our preference is when we're pulling into campground, we like sites that have a sense of privacy in them. Um, we like our passenger side windows to be facing something that has a view other than of someone else's RV. So, yeah, ideally our windows right across here, our office view, our view from our, our couch, everything that we're looking out at. We don't want to see other people. That's what we, we want this to be a picture window postcard view of nature, oceans, mountains, lakes, waters, awesome. But that's kind of our personal goal is what's our view out those windows. And we like to be able to leave the windows open on that side of the RV and not worry about what we're wearing inside. <laughs> um, because we like to roll out of bed and not necessarily uh, put on clothes right away. And we also like when we step out our front door to not be walking out into a social space. So we don't like to immediately invite people to come up and stop by. Because people in campgrounds can be pretty social. And we like to be social on our terms. And on the other hand, we know people who they have the exact opposite requirement. Their ideal campground setup is their front porch is out on the street. They'll sit out there in the rocker all day, say hi to everybody who walks by. Um, and that is exactly what they're optimizing for. So we're not saying our way is the way, but we're just saying we're going to give you tips on how to find the site that fits your perfect style. Uh, like uh, Robert shared with us, um, our assistant that's helping out this evening, who happens to be in the same campground with us, uh, that he has a preference for ca uh, campsites that are gravel so that you can anchor down your outdoor mat and awning instead of a concrete site. So. These are the sorts of things that you learn when you're on the road that you like or don't like. Some people like to be close to the bathhouse. Others don't want to be anywhere near it because yes. they don't want the traffic. Right. Depends. Are you, are, you know, some RVers, even RVers with big class A's, prefer to take showers to, in, in the campground facilities because maybe their RV bathroom has been turned into the litter box room or something like that. Or it's just smaller. They don't want to worry about having mm -hmm. to dump their tanks right. if they don't have full hookups. We design so that we can be independent, regardless of hookups, for about two weeks with abundant water use. Yes. So, so in, in we our, don't use campground. Yeah, showers. In, in our, in our even, even when we're someplace with full hookups, we'll often ignore the hookups just to get the optimal positioning in the site or even going in the site backwards. I'll talk about that later. You give us some previews. Sorry, jumping ahead. <laughs> yes. There's an outline. There's, There's an, an outline. outline. There's an outline. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so whatever your preferences are for a campsite, so know that going in first. And before you even get to a campground, you might have to make a reservation on a specific site, or you may only have limited options of sites if uh, based upon availability. So what are some ways that you can determine in advance if which site you specifically want to book that meets your needs the best? This is where you do the detective work. In advance. Okay. So this is kind of the process we use. I'm not saying it's the only way. This is what we do. Is uh, First of all, we like to go and look at campground reviews. And a lot of campgrounds. She likes to. Okay, I do. I do most of the research, so I'm yes. probably going to do most of the talking. Yeah, now. yeah. I, 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 I you just drive the bus and go there. I, I do the navigation how to get place to places, but she's the one who's like obsessed. I found the perfect site, and she is un, she's amazing at it. We just pull in and we're like, wow, you did manage to get the best site at this entire campground For over us. and over For and over us. again. Okay, so I look at campground reviews, and I try to get a feel of what other people say about the campground. If they make note of 
do the sites feel cramped? Do they get the views that I like? I look for wording in the campgrounds. And a lot of the campground review sites now allow the reviewers to post photos of the site um, or even video. Um, if I'm following a blogger that has been to the location before, I might go look at their review and their photos of it. I love going places where our friend Nina and Paul have been to because she does amazing campground reviews Super on her blog. <laughs> Super <laughs> so she's always a first resource I go to. And I'm sure many of you do too, as well. That's wheelingit.us, by the way, if you're not familiar with them. Some of the campground review sites I'd love is uh, Campendium. Um, that one is has great mapping features on it and they have a lot of photos of the sites on there. And part of what they're doing is they're the owners of it. Uh, uh, Luminarium is their personal blog is they actually go out to a lot of the campgrounds in their travels and they take photos of every site on there. So it's you, a hugely ambitious project, it's very ambitious, but it gives you a lot of information about the sites that are there. So you can make a more informed choice. Um, I also will check rvparkreviews.com before. Uh, they're not doing as many of the photos, but they're starting to integrate those in as well. Mm -hmm. And then you'll there's some other campsites that do video. Uh, I think Campsite Views is out there as well. I don't check those nearly as often. And I honestly, I don't view video that often. So mm -hmm. I, I'm not as a video centric as well, but there are video sites out there as well. And then a lot of the reservation systems, like I love Reserve America and Recreation.gov for booking my sites because we love state parks, Army Corps of Engineer parks, public parks. Um, so I love being able to book my site online. And a lot of them have done a really good job of having a couple photos of each site. Mm -hmm. Some state parks really suck at this and don't do well with it and don't have it. But the Florida ones and some of the other ones, they do a fantastic job. And that gives me a really instant view of what's going to be there and yeah so looking at a picture sometimes you can learn so much of just how much vegetation is between sites because a lot of the, the campground maps and the overview maps are not to scale and they're not accurate at all and um it looks like these sites might be all bunched up together and they're actually spread out and so there's there's reserve america this is uh for jonathan Dixon State Park. There's a tape delay, so I'm trying to line up the <laughs> arrows over there. Tape delay. That's what you get on Reserve America, is you get some squiggly lines and some blue boxes that show the campsite. It's completely not to scale. That doesn't tell you anything about the campsite, really, about what's going to be around it. You have to go look at the photos for each one to get an idea of uh, what the vegetation is. Another trick I'll do is I'll go look at the photos of the surrounding campsites to see if I can get another view on the site that we're, look, that that we're, we're looking at, that we're considering, that's considering. the one that's open. Um, and then also looking at, well, okay. <laughs> we're looking at what? Yeah. What do you do next? <laughs> <laughs> and she says, here's three sites. Which one has the coolest uh, view and which one looks like it's going to be best to get the bus into? And like, does it look unlevel? Does it look like it has a, a washed out section and stuff like that? Where are the hookups? Where are the different ways to rotate in? Um, how, much flex, how much flexibility are we going right. to have to maneuver, which I'm going to talk about later, some of the things we do once we get to the site. But another tip that I do, so I take this 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 campground map, the, the showing the, the campground that's on Reserve America, and then I will bring up the campground in Google Maps. I'll just Google the campground's name, bring up the campground in Google Maps, and then I will switch it over to satellite view or Earth View, which is down there in the corner, and this is going to be really difficult. I'm just going to come over here. Let's see, <laughs> yeah, see if I'll, I can I'll do this. I'll let you give a preview here. You can see All right, good. You. I can do this. And I'm going to click the satellite view. This is Jonathan Dixon, and then I'm just going to zoom in. It's Dickinson. Dickinson, sorry. Yes. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to try to find what looks like the campground. And this is where you try to match up reality with the campgrounds. So the scale map. there's what it looks like on satellite view. And I click back over to the campground map. And let's say this is the site here that is available. And they show some photos. And if you go into the listing, you'll see more photos of it. So I'm looking for the third campsite on the top of the loop. So I'm going to go, oops, sorry, that's my wrong, there, wrong way. I'm going <laughs> to zoom in a little bit closer. Bring in the campground site. I'm like, one two and three this is the site like huh so the things i'm looking at is this campground sucks for having vegetation in between the sites i can see there's no trees in between them and there's a lot of openness in between the sites and for me that's not exactly what we like that's not our ideal 
But if this is the area I want to be with, I'm dealing, willing to deal with it. What I can also tell from this campsite is the middle sites, they have some sites that are backed up to each other. It's rather closely. And that's not something we're personally isn't our preference. So I'm going to be looking for a campground uh, site that's on the out. We are outer loop. Girl. I'm an outer loop girl. We love the outer loop. And uh, we like it so we can see something out our window. But what I can tell about this campground is whoever designed it really put a lot of effort so that each site can angle in such a way where you're not getting a direct view of another camp uh, RV. So they've done a really good job of laying out the campground for this. So you can just see how, how they've staggered the angles of each of these sites. So this camper is looking this way. This camper's position so that their view is in this area and not into this camper's view. So I really like that. And I'm looking at this site. This is the site. Let's pretend that is open. And let's also pretend that happens to be the site we're currently in right now. And this is exactly what I did when selecting this site. Is I say, okay, it's pretty wide. It's probably reasonable odds that we can change it. And I really like how this site is angled in such a way that my view is going to be from here to here. And I am probably have really good odds. I don't have to look at another RV if I don't want to. All pretty scenery. So... That is one way that we use technology to pick our sites. And then if you zoom in, here, I guess I'll get back there closer. But just one more tool that you can, you can implement here is you can go even further and you go into street view. And you can see, you actually move around the sites and get a really good feel of just what this campground is like. And I'm seeing here, there is not a lot of vegetation in this campground. And you know what? It was right. <laughs> yeah, so not every place will have Street View, having recorded it. But when when places have had Street View go there, it is amazing. I mean, we use Street mm -hmm. View to scout out. Can you get through overpasses? Is there tight turns? Um, you know, low overhangs. Street View is a wonderful resource for our viewers. So that's one of the tricks that we use to pick which site. So you know, you're sometimes very limited to the sites that are available, but that's what I will do. Now, if there's only one site available, like maybe I just happened upon a last minute cancellation, which is very common on Reserve America, um, is I will actually go into Reserve America, select the dates that I want, go ahead and click the reserve button so I get to the login screen. I don't actually check out at this point, but that will actually place a hold on that site for those days. I think it's about five or 10 minutes. And that gives me time to then go and do that sort of research, investigation right. and research to see, is that the site I really want? It's, not, it's nothing's worse than doing all that research and then be like, oh, the site's gone. Because these sites can go fast sometimes. Mm -hmm. And if you're really looking to optimize, you can get a, <laughs> a site, you know, get a suboptimal site at a park and then just keep a watch on it and maybe find a better site and upgrade and just mm -hmm. pay the cancellation and switch fees. Yeah, stuff. the switch fees, on, it varies by state on what they charge. But now if you're dealing with a commercial campground and you're on the phone with someone saying, hey, which site do you want? <laughs> Try to do the same thing with their campground and get kind of a visual of what's going on and give them that feedback. Hopefully more campgrounds are going to online reservations. I would with love pictures, that. Would with be great. pictures um, and then Because not all sites are created equal. Oh, definitely not. Definitely not. And, you know, some people like shade. Some want, don't want uh, trees blocking their satellite uh, receivers and things like that. So there's all sorts of considerations of what might, 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 what <laughs> might make a site ideal for you. Okay. Now, our favorites are ones we don't have to pick the site out in advance. So, so yeah, the, the parks, certain certain areas have um, first come, first serve parks. And we love that. You might have a reservation that's holding you a guaranteed spot of, a cert, of your size. But once you get there, you just pick the one that feels right. And so we'll just go in and say, hey, we're going to drive the loop. And they'll say, come back and let us know what, which one you picked. Those are our favorite parks, like McKinney Falls in Texas is one like oh, that. All the Texas state parks and Georgia state parks, those are some of my two favorite state park systems, is you may just make a reservation for a site that fits your size RV, and then when you get there, you choose the site that you want. And you've got it for the rest of the time. Yeah. And the trick with that to get the best sites is arrive somewhere between Sunday and Thursday, you're going to have maximum yeah, site like, selection. Like, like Monday, and uh, arrive late morning, like right after checkout time-ish and stuff, whatever the checkout time mm -hmm. is for the park. Because, you know, no matter how much work you do in advance, you, you're never going to be able to tell by Google Street View that there's a giant family reunion happening in sites 16 through 18, 
and you don't want to be right in the middle or next door to that. Satellite's not live. Remember <laughs> Satellite, that? Satellite's not, not live. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're not going to know those. Sort of, I, I like being able to pick the site, not just based upon my preferences, but also what's, what's going to be quiet so we can get work done. Yeah, or what, or you know, where are the interesting, you know, just feel and vibe and stuff when you mm -hmm. pull in of like, oh, there's there's this, there's running water here, and I want to hear that at night. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. All right, so you got your site selected, you got it reserved, you get there. It's not exactly what you wanted. It doesn't give you what you needed. And so, what are some of the corrections that you can make? Uh, with your site. Of course, the first one is go back to the office and see if there's another option that you can switch to. Yeah. Sometimes even parks that are sold out actually have sites in reserve that you might be able to swap around. So it can't hurt to ask, mm -hmm. particularly if you don't fit. I mean, then, then they're like, okay, well, we need to try and get you into something that might work for you. Mm -hmm. And we've done that before. We might have uh, toughed it out for a night or two in the site that doesn't quite work for us. And we just keep it, especially in first come first surf campgrounds, we look for vacating campers and then ask permission to switch sites. Yeah. We will scope them out. It's like, they look like they're leaving tomorrow. They're packed up. As soon as they pull out, we'll go to the office and say, can we take that site? Or and <laughs> bam, instant upgrade to Waterfront Primo site. Yes, which we love. Yeah. We're giving away all our tricks. They're going to be taking our sites. <laughs> all right. Um, we're going to have nothing but waterfront sites in the future. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> no, not nothing but. We'll just still be yes, RVing half true. the year. I want my sites. All right. Okay, so some of the things that we do when we get to site is we will play around with our angling. Um, you don't have to pull into your site exactly perpendicular to the curbs or whatever the site definitions are. And, and some places have rules that you can't go in backwards, but a lot of places you're perfectly fine going in backwards, particularly if that doesn't put your door opening up on a neighbor's door. We consider that really rude mm -hmm. to put yourself awning to awning with somebody else. but Without their permission. Without their permission. But otherwise, if you're able to back into a, or go forward into a back-end site or backwards into a forward site, you might not line up with the hookups, but if you have enough extension cords and whatever to make that work, suddenly you've got a whole new vista, literally. Yeah. Unfortunately, those of you in pull-behinds, trailers, and fifth wheels, you may you not have that flexibility in some of these sites, especially a back-end site, if you can't get your truck in and out to, to maneuver. We did this a lot with our smaller trailers because they're very maneuverable. Um, but with a larger trailer, it's going to be much more difficult to do that with. Yeah. Us in motorhomes, though, we have this option. Yeah, sometimes sometimes we get almost sideways in the site just to maximize our front porch mm -hmm. and uh, turn that, get, give mm -hmm. us the view that we crave. Right. If you go look at the photo that we just posted on Instagram and Facebook this evening with the big double rainbow going over the campground, we had an amazing rainstorm earlier today at sunset. Um, if you look at the angle that we are into that site that I just showed you in, in my example, um, we are actually pulled in at a probably about a 20 degree angle into the site to give us even extra view. avoidance of the view uh, of having an, an RV in view. It's not that we hate our RVing neighbors. It's just, but, that's not what I'm paying to see. And that's yeah. not what I'm out that's, here that, for. <laughs> we spend a lot of our day at our desks and we want to have something awesome to look at. And we've had bunnies hopping by and nature going past. And, and that's, that's much more exciting than somebody else's picnic. Yeah, I totally <laughs> applaud them having their picnic. I just yeah. don't want to necessarily watch it. Yes. <laughs> um, okay, so once you are in your site, if, if privacy is a concern for you, which it is for us, like I said, we, the, we occasionally, hopefully not find us walking around naked inside our RV. <laughs> That's our goal. Yes. Um, is No, we're okay. often up late and, at night yeah. and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah we, we, we don't want people peeking in on us. Um, so we like to, and we like to have our windows open, especially during the day when we're working. And we do have these um, these day, day shades. shades. So yeah. we've ours. We made a mistake. Well, not a mistake. This is complicated. <laughs> this is a black MCD sh pull down shade, and behind it is a black mesh screen shade that gives us privacy during the day. So unless you're like right up close on the RV during the day, you really, really can't, can't see, see it. But as soon as it's dark outside, if outside, the lights are in inside, it's like a show. You see it, but black and black they look exactly the same and <laughs> sorry they're, neighbors we forgot that so one, every right? so often we're like oh wait the shades that's only the day shade down Oops. Oops. <laughs> so oh. remember that yes double um, check your shades we also do a walk around of our rv from various places where people might be taking a walk or what our neighbors might see so that we're very aware of which windows and curtains and shades that we do need to have pulled down 
if we do want privacy. Right, because if we do manage to line up with the stunning water view or sunrise over a swamp or something like that, we want to leave the windows and the shades on that side with the view open so that when we get morning light mm -hmm. shining in the bedroom, we get the we open our eyes and see the sunrise mm -hmm. or see the, see the waves in the ocean mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And my last tip for getting a great view from your RV, don't forget to wash your windows. <laughs> yes. It is amazing. It makes a difference. Dif <laughs> the difference it makes. You get a <laughs> lot of road debris on your windows when you're moving your RV around. And so I have a, a pole with a, a washer on it. Actually, you can go grab it under, from underneath the sink. Your little tool I use to wash our windows. And uh, yeah, I just, it's amazing when I, when I remember it, is to get outside this... This attaches to a pole, and we also use this for cleaning our mirrors and windows on the inside. It's a microfiber towel. I just wet it, put a little bit of window cleaner on it, and I just go around, squeegee, and it's got a squeegee on the back end. And I just squeegee the windows, and that makes such an incredible difference in our experience is having clean windows. You don't really notice it when they're dirty. But, but you, you really know, notice it when they're, they're clean. clean. They're pretty good. So, yes. definitely. This is like 10 bucks at Home Depot. Yes. Definitely worth it. We, we see a lot of RVs that you barely see through the windows. And, yeah. Sometimes ours. Yes. <laughs> Usually <laughs> ours. <laughs> All right. Uh, we have one last little section to talk about. Like I said, this is going to be a quick one this evening. Um, and so, if you have questions that you want to queue up for us, go ahead and start queuing them up. And Robert is, uh, I see he's steadily taking notes over there. So, do get your questions in and we'll move right into it after the wine, of course. Does this mean it's time to open the wine? No, not yet. We no, got one more yet. section. Oh, okay, one more section. That's right. Remember, we added one on because that's ah yes, because that we've been talking about campgrounds. optimal sites at campgrounds. But what if you're not in a campground? What if you're boondocking? Whether you're uh, stealth camping or boondocking at uh, overnighting at a Walmart or a Home Depot or something, or if you're <laughs> out boondocking on, a fr on free public lands. We actually even work for views when we're doing Walmart camping. We'll yes. find, hey, there's a really nice retention pond over here and nobody else will park. <laughs> and we'll line up our view at a Walmart because we're view junkies. Even, <laughs> we're even for we're that. really... We, we won't get kind of crazy with angles at a Walmart because no. that looks kind of weird. But, but, you know, but we'll pick the side of the view. We're really bad. I mean, I want my view. Or we want a maximum view every single day. Every day should be awesome is in our experience, right? Rainbow every day. Okay, so... If we're pulling into a boondocking area, so we were out at the Depoy uh, water, water management, management area, area mm -hmm. in uh, in Florida, outside Lake Okeechobee, and actually Robert was there too. <laughs> we were yeah. just stalk stalking each other. Um, so the, what we did is we would park the bus on, you know, after we got through the gate, and then we would go walk the campground or drive our Mini Cooper around to go see what available is available for us. Before we just just go go driving the motorhome into a new area yeah. and scout it out because you could quickly get yourself into some tricky uh, situations. And, stuff, yeah. mm -hmm. and it's also pretty annoying for anybody else who's there to have a big diesel in and out and scoping. So we park and we will walk and we'll spend sometimes half an hour finding where would be the best spot. We'll bring a compass with us, a compass on our phones and stuff. So where's north, where's south, where's the We're sun solar come powered. Up. We want the best solar. And we don't want to minimize the amount of heat coming in the windows too that's actually a major consideration yeah and we do try to not have our front windows facing the sun especially late afternoon because that brings so much extra heat into the rv i know some of you are in like actual winter right now we're in florida <laughs> where winter kind of We've took a vacation air more it's this winter ridiculous. than we did all last summer <laughs> it has been ridiculously hot um and a major concern okay. with, especially when boondocking all right so we are looking when we go scout out our boondocking locations and we use a lot of these same techniques to get the view that we want. We also are looking, since we prefer solar and we prefer not to hear generators, it, uh, not our own generator or anybody else's, we do kind of look for where the other solar snobs are um, <laughs> because then we have decent odds of reducing the generator. Of course, it never fails. You park next to the person with the 3,000 watts of solar and then someone with a 46-foot fifth wheel with a generator running all weekend pulls in between you. Not that that happened. <laughs> <laughs> yes, or, or even worse, somebody with a, a janky little construction no. generator on their back bumper pulls up in your area as well. And you're like, oh. But we do our best. <laughs> and, you know, if you are going to be generator dependent, there's nothing wrong with that. We don't but, hate you. But then if you see solar people... Try to stay away from stay them. Away, yeah, just... just uh, Separate. It's, yeah, it's, 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 you, yeah, go with the part. generator people. Uh, do try to to find, especially in this campground, there was shade for the generator people and the solar sunny field for the solar people. And, you know, when you 
you try to mix solar generator people together. And there's a little bit of well, a rumble sol- and solar, fighting. And well, just... solar people don't annoy generator people. Just yeah. our snobbishness does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> All right. I think that's it. I think okay. we're ready for wine. Okay, time for the wine. Okay, that was our tips. <laughs> <laughs> this one was a quickie tonight. Uh, we do have a, a whole bunch of advising sessions in the morning. Okay, so we've got tonight's wine is William Hill Estate Winery. I think we got yeah. that at Costco. I don't have a special story and for that one. I'm got sorry. A, a white one as well. That Robert yes. Brought. Yes, we opened Robert's wine too. Do you want to start with white or red? Actually, mm, do you have a preference? No. <laughs> oh, we got you. Oh, don't mix them. I, okay. Just choose one. Let's There's people the waiting. Okay, and they're fine. not getting wine. They don't care what kind of wine yeah, we drink. <laughs> um, if you appreciate these tips and tricks and videos that we are sharing with you, we're doing these for fun. That's Wait why there's lots of them. There's a lot of laughter. We do these for fun. It is our joy to share with you. Uh, we do like wine, however, and if you would like to contribute to the wine fund, there is a leave a tip button at the bottom right-hand corner of every page on the blog. That's technomadia.com. And you can go and leave a tip there. We do greatly appreciate it. We don't expect it. We're not doing this to raise funds or anything like that. But we do like contributions to our wine and dine fund. Um, we also just love hearing your gratitude for these. Um, don't hesitate to say thank you. It really means a lot to us. If you're uh, watching this on YouTube, leave us a nice comment. Yeah, leave it. a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. These are things, they all keep us inspired to come back next month and take the time and energy and bandwidth to do another topic. So, um, this is a two-way street. Like I said, you know, these, these chats are run on gratitude. All right, uh, BJMS. How do you deal with, let's see, I need to put a word wrap on this. Uh, neighboring camp rings that are too close. Um, and yet yeah, we, we don't like it when our neighbors have camp smokes. Um, <laughs> it's Campfires are one thing. You, know, you get a nice burning hot fire and it um, you know, can be kind of pleasant. But some people don't know how to build a fire. And they're more like trying to send smoke signals. And that can be really annoying for your neighbors. And there's really not a lot you can do about it. Um, particularly if you're at the campgrounds where people are out for vacation, that's their mm-hmm. thing. And I'm not going to try and rain on their parade if, you know, I'll close up the windows and turn on the air conditioner if we have to. Yeah, if you really don't want campfires around, try to find RV parks that are more catered to seasonal and, um, full-time RVers that are less campgrounds and more RV parks. But if you want the campground experience, you want to be out in nature, you want the bigger sites, that is unfortunately part of the territory, is camp, I found campfire rings are just part of it. We use ours as a cat hook. That's where her leash gets attached to so she can go out and hunt. Yes. Well, she's, she's, that's all our campfire ring ever gets used for. We, we have a campfire in a can. If we do want to be social outside, we have a little propane-powered campfire in a can that we can set up. And no smoke, no mess, no fuss, and still all the great fun and light and everything like that. And when we're done, it's instantly off. So... We do do that on rare occasions when we're doing the outside hangout. Okay. TJ would like to know, is it considered okay to spend a few hours at a rest stop when tired while traveling, and is it safe? Um, very usually that's, very that's, safe. That's, that's why they're there. That rest stops are there specifically so you can spend a few hours to rest. That's rest stops. Um, do check the state laws for the um this the rest stops in that state they do vary some might have a two hour limit some might have up to a 24 hour limit so you don't overstay the welcome um there is an app for that it's called state lines we happen to have written it (laughs) um that does list all the rest stop laws laws. by state now they can vary by individual yeah so check always check the sign and also sometimes the rest stops have attendants and stuff and you can check in with the attendant and they can override the sign and they can say we've had that happen it's like oh man we we really want to stay here and they're like yeah rest come by we have free donuts in the morning come back to the 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 desk and it's like (laughs) coffee and donuts okay Uh um all right. Um, and is it in, if considering a Walmart, what is the proper procedure to ask if it's okay? Technically, you're supposed to go inside to the customer service desk and ask uh, whoever's on charge there or ask for the manager and just ask. But we try to research in advance. We use Overnight RV Parking, who does a really good job of uh, confirming reports of places to overnight. We'll check the All Stays app. They usually have the marked if the Walmart allows it or not. 
and um, and then you'll see other RVers and stuff, and you just kind of slot yourself in if mm -hmm. there's other RVs there. Yeah, we don't do the Walmarts all that often. Um, we do it very occasionally for making miles. Most of the time, we have our travel plans, so we're doing maybe two or three hours of driving at max, and then we're into our next campground and next and longer stay for a while. Uh, we've gotten past the. Yeah, it, it, it's good if we're going cross country mm -hmm. and you'll just do mm -hmm. the quick overnights. Yep. All right, uh, Brett. Are you planning on being in the path of the solar eclipse on August 21st? My only plan for August 21st is being living aboard my boat. Yes, but yeah, the, mm -hmm. I I would do a um, a full day trip drive just to try uh, and be in the path of the eclipse. Just, I'm not sure I would, just because of weather conditions and if, things, if, so many things can yeah. deter it. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll figure out. We'll, we'll, we'll be thinking about that about a week before the eclipse. So, um, If you are interested in being in the path, the Escapers group, which is the working age RVers subgroup of the Escapees RV Club, did just put together a convergence in Oregon at a spot that has boondocking availability. So a whole bunch of cool RVers are going to be getting together and converging for that event. So and, you might want to look into that. And the Oregon is probably going to be one of the best places with as far as weather odds go for seeing the solar eclipse. So mm -hmm. this is going to be epic up there. Uh, Mark would know what checking ATM bank company works well when traveling in the U.S. Um, we do have a, uh, a whole post on this, uh, technomadia.com slash money, um, that goes over considerations for banking. Uh, we use Capital 360, which used to be ING Direct. They're an all online bank. Uh, we have used them since the day. Well, you used them before you hit the road. Yeah, I've had them forever. That's... But uh, they're pretty great because they can mail a check from our account to anybody. Um, and they will do cashier's checks as well. And wire transfers to not to boat closing companies, unfortunately, mm -hmm. uh, as we might have found out. And um, they do everything online. So you get access to their eight. They're, they are members of the All Point ATM network, so we get free access to ATMs that way for the limited times we actually need cash. Uh, but Wells Fargo apparently works pretty well. I have ethical problems with what they did. Um, some of them, people love uh, credit unions. There's a credit union network that you can use different networks around. Um, so if yeah. your credit union is part of that, that works really well for people. A lot of people, people love USAA. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you qualify for membership there. Um, but for, banking has gotten really easy. Yeah, banking's it's, easy. Everything's if you've online got a bank now. That, if you've got a bank that makes it hard, it's Leave not them. F find a better bank because there's so many banks that do yeah. online easy. Yeah. For the, the few times we get a check that we have to deposit, we just deposit by smartphone. You just take a picture, click, click, done. I haven't actually stepped foot in a bank now. In, it's, I think it's, since we had to grab cash to buy the bus six years ago. Yeah, yeah and that was kind of a, 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 a fiasco. Yeah, we went to the bank. We bought the bus for $8,000 in cash. And and uh, the, the seller wanted it in cash in a parking lot. In, in small, um, non-sequential bills. No, right? we even go that else. <laughs> so we went to our bank. We also keep a small account with Chase, so we do have access to a bricks and mortar if we need it. And um, we go to we went the, to... the local branch, and they're like, we don't have cash. We're we like, don't have that You're much cash. You're a bank. They're like, yeah, we don't have $8,000 cash here. You have to so go to the bigger branch downtown. I'm like, you're a bank. This is not a lot of money. What's going on? Why Why do you even have physical st shop spots anymore if you don't actually have cash in them? <laughs> so, right. um, so yeah, uh, banking has gotten really easy. So go with, go with something that gives you the resources that you need. Um, you probably, unless you're depositing cash or needing lots of cash, um, you will probably find you don't need a bricks and mortar bank all that yeah, often. You can deposit checks with your phone now mm -hmm. just by taking pictures. You so. can send payments electronically um that works for business we use chase um because they have a, a pretty easy uh they used to call it quick pay they changed the name again but you know we pay our contractors um through that and uh for a couple companies we can take payments from them that way too um, so it works really well and then we use paypal for our membership site uh, which works pretty well yep um what mattress are we using now we have a helix Yep, so uh, last year we experimented with the various internet-ordered uh, mattresses, so we had tried a Lisa and a Purple. Uh, Lisa was great, uh, just not, not quite right quite for, us. for us. The Purple was awful. Um, and then so we settled on Helix, which uh, you enter in your body dimensions and your sleep preferences, and they custom make you a mattress. And we got that in August, and we decided to keep it, and we just put a memory foam topper on top. Just a little so. bit extra cushion. Yeah. yeah, so that's our current mattress. All right.
Are we done with questions? I'll ask questions. You guys have no questions <clears throat> for us tonight. All right. Wow. All right. Well, we hopped through it pretty quickly. I know it's late. Um, we have an early morning. We still have 117 people hanging out here, though, yeah. so. 117 people without questions. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, this is a, a fun, simple topic. It and, is. Um, yes. It was. I wanted to keep it light tonight because we had our uh, MIA webinar on selecting cellular plans, which was going deeper. So and it's been a hectic week. So Busiest week ever. We're going to call it a night. And thank you for joining in. And um, potentially next time we could be on a boat. Dennis came in with a question. What oh. is your favorite campground? Oh, that's that's impossible. <laughs> yeah. Favorite camper, wherever I'm at now. Yeah, there's so many out there. There's yeah, we do have a, a series of, we do pick 12 favorite campgrounds every year. If you go to the uh, the website, go to Travels, you'll find it down there. Yeah, we also did a video. Of and a video, the that, did, uh, so. and you'll find that on YouTube, so you can see our 12 favorite campgrounds. That's as best as I'm Every year we do a pick. <laughs> we pick our top 12. And it's hard to pick just 12 in a year. We, we, <laughs> we pretty much... We do really well finding awesome we, places. We do our homework so that almost every campground we go to is a favorite. Yeah. All right. Good night, guys. We'll see you next time.